Well, here we are back uh, on the next project on the good old GTV6. Uh, after I had finished all of the wiring upgrades to sort of this section of the car and the fuse box and all the feeders and blah, 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 blah. You can see that it's all taken apart again. I uh, did drive the car a little bit after I fixed that wiring to make sure everything worked inside and etc. It all worked excellent. So we are on to the next project. Uh, intake plenum off, all the airbox and intake stuff off, all the hoses off, as well as all of the wiring harnesses for the fuel, in, in, fuel injection system, as well as the ignition system is all disconnected now because it is now going to be out of here. I am now going to be converting this to run on the Milano Verde system, that which I've had sitting around for the last five, six years because I converted my Milano to Motronic. So I had all these extra parts and it's a much better management compared to what this car had because it's, you know, about 10 years newer in design. So it's got a lot more features. Um, not a hell of a lot of features, but a few that kind of stand out to me that uh, sort of justify the work involved in throwing this in. Uh, the fuel injection harness for the old system is sitting here on the floor. And the Milano harness is sitting here in my vise, getting modified. Um, obviously, the Milano engine bay is differently shaped than the GTV6. So some slight modifications have to be done to this harness here in order to get it to fit in there. Um, namely being that the quantity of wires is much more. As you can see, there's quite a lot more wiring um, involved in the Milano 3.0 system um, as it has the fuel injection computer uh, seen here, same as the uh, original one, um, as well as it has an electronic uh, digital ignition system uh, for controlling the ignition advance and retard. Uh, so this is obviously one of the major, um, <coughs> excuse me, one of the major reasons uh, to be doing some of this work is to get the digital electronic ignition um, a couple of the other reasons that I'm doing this are that even though these are both Bosch L-Jet, this is a much earlier version compared to this. Um, boy, it's really pouring outside. But anyway, this um, uh, this uh, L-Jet is kind of a later version. Um, it has a lot more features compared to the early version, and you can easily see that by the components on the board. You can see that the top board on this ECU is completely populated with components, whereas the original ECU fitted to the GV6 was a very basic, basic model. You can see there's a lot of parts in here that aren't uh, used um, because they didn't really need to. Emissions change, things change, and so they need to uh, put more features in them in order to get them to run differently. And also there's just, you know, things get better over time. Um, one of the main reasons this ECU is taken apart is because obviously this is a Milano ECU. A Milano has a 5,800 RPM rev limit and the GTV6 ECU has a probably a 6,250 RPM rev limit. So I'm just comparing resistor values of the uh, rev limit resistor uh, so that I can just pop in the right value resistor so that I can use this ECU just with the higher rev limit because I don't want to strangle this two and a half liter engine to 5,750 RPM. I want to get the full RPM out of it. Um, it's actually just this resistor right here, the uh, 704R704. You can see that's the resistor there. So I'll just do some uh, quick testing on the ECU with my, um, on the bench with my uh, function generator and we'll just adjust this resistor value until I get to the 6,250 RPM or maybe 65 or whatever I choose to be the new rev limit. Anyway, this ECU has a whole bunch of other features. Um, which also um, warrant the work involved in me doing all this. Uh, one of them being it has a three position throttle position sensor. Uh, so it has the idle and then the part throttle and then it has the wide open throttle. Whereas this old system has only the wide open throttle switch. As you can see on this plenum, there's only one switch on it. So you start flooring it and then the switch clicks as you can hear. So that switch is only the wide open throttle switch. Um, adding the idle switch functionality under this ECU allows you to do a whole bunch of other things. Um, it allows uh, fuel deceleration on overrun, which saves fuel and prevents backfiring. Uh, it also allows you to run uh, uh, better better air fuel ratios at idle um, because it can it can determine uh, how the oxygen sensor is is sort of intervening with the fuel mix at idle. 
Um, and that's another thing that this system benefits hugely is it has a heated O2 sensor, uh, which this older system didn't have. So it's going to be more efficient in that way that the O2 sensor has actually got a heater. It'll come online much faster. Other features of this uh, more modern ECU. Um, I'm just trying to think of the other features. Um, hmm. I know there was a couple. But anyway, I can't think of them now. If I think of them by the end of the video, we'll, we'll figure that out. So anyways, we've got this Milano harness here with the additional bit that goes up and over the cowl. So that piece isn't gonna go up and over all the way to the ignition system, which is over here. So all that junk is gonna go and it's gonna be replaced by a very simplistic um, ignition system controlled by that computer. So I'm basically at this point modifying this old harness into the shape that that one was in so that it fits on the engine and fits on the car properly. From there, I'm going to tape it all up, get it all ready to go. And then these clips are all screwed up for the injectors as they always are. So I'm gonna change all those um, to make the harness look and perform a little better. Uh, so you can see the heated O2 sensor. Oh yes, the newer ECU also has an altitude adjustment. Um, it doesn't do a hell of a lot, uh, but um, if you're at a high elevation, you know, if you're at a high elevation in the mountains or something, uh, this will help it idle a lot better. So that's another feature that this newer system has that the GV6 didn't. Um, there's the three wire throttle position sensor. But yeah, the rest of it's mostly the same. Just it's got a couple other features. Obviously, I'm going to need to get a new distributor as this system is on a Hall effect and the old system was not on a Hall effect. So that's being ordered. It's going to come. So yeah. Um, in addition, um, you can see I've pulled off a whole bunch of stuff off this Milano harness that I don't need uh, because obviously the Milano GTV6 are wired a little differently. So that's come out. Uh, I only need this half to be on the harness because the vehicle has the other half built in. You can see that that's the other half of that. And so what is gonna end up happening is um, I'm gonna just end up pulling this back in the stock harness, probably to about here. I'll break it out and put the relay set in here. You can see I've got the wiper motor and all that stuff out so that I can get all my wire lengths all perfect and nice and neat and tidy and then I'll throw it all back together. I'll uh, fix this hose as well while I'm at it, since they all break on these cars. So yes, definitely a little bit of a job, uh, but give me uh, something to do and it uh, certainly will run a little better on the uh, newer, better management. So yeah, we'll um, update you and uh, on what's going on a little bit later on.